78. If you'll turn there, please. How many of y'all love the Word of God tonight? We had an awesome move of the Lord this morning. If you weren't here this morning, get the message. The, me- the ta- CDs are free. Okay, you don't have to purchase it. If you weren't here, get the message. You will hear things that will shock you. Amen. You need to get it. Okay, in Psalm 78, y'all going to help me preach tonight. Best thing doing these kind of messages is just to get in there and get with it, you know, because if you sit there and um, I preach, it's going to be hard for you, okay? So best thing to do, just get, when this thing, this fire goes forth, just get on fire with it. <laughs> Uh, that's the easiest way to deal with this kind of message. Just get on fire with it, all right? And just receive it, and let's have church tonight. Mm, yeah, hallelujah. All right, in Psalm 78, praise the Lord. Verse thirty. Seven. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away, And did not stir up all his wrath. Thank God for that. For he remembered that they were but flesh. And I like to say it this way. We all do dumb things sometimes. For he remembered that they were but flesh. A wind that passeth away. And cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? They turned, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the unlimited. In the book of Genesis. Oh, my, my, my. I'm sorry, Exodus. In the book of Exodus. In Exodus chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mounts, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, We want not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it, with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink 
and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt hath corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And then we know Moses intercedes to God for them. And when he does, the Lord repents of that decision to destroy them in verse 14. Verse 15, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. It came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, And he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire, ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee? Thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief for they said unto me make us gods which shall go before us for as for this Moses the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt we wot not what is become of him and I said unto them whosoever hath any gold let them break it off so they gave it me then I cast it into the fire and there came out this calf what foolishness mixed up mind man and when Moses saw that the people were naked for Herod had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said who is on the Lord's side let him come unto me and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourself today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. It came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure I shall make atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now... If thou wilt forgive their sin, and then there's a long slash, a long pause. And if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. The Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angels shall go before thee. 
Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your spirit, your presence. I reverence you, O oh God, tonight. You are holy. Lord Jesus, have your way in our midst. We give you honor and glory tonight, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. What uh, concerns me is that, and I thank God for all the awesome things that happened while we were gone. I, I thank God for the awesome word that was preached here. I thank God for your faithfulness. But when I came here this morning, um, God let me know that not everything was right in the house. Are you here? I'm not here to, to be your judge and your jury, but I am here to let you know that God is a holy God, and He's a righteous God. And the Bible tells us about a people, Israel, God's people, that limited Him. It, it is amazing to me that you could limit the unlimitable, the unlimited God, you could limit Him. I could limit him. The people of God limited him. Wasn't the devil that did it. The devil can't stop God. The devil can't limit God. The world can't stop God. The world can't limit God. But God's people can tie his hands and limit him in what he wants to do in and through their life. I don't want it to be spoken of me or this church that we are limiting God. Amen. I can get in the way. As a pastor, I can get in the way. Great apostles get in the way. Are you here today? Great apostles, men that are in the Bible. Get in the way. Peter missed God and Paul withstood him to the face. So that even a great man like Peter missed God and limited God concerning the Gentiles that were coming into the church. And if a great apostle can limit God, so can a pastor in Bible Center Fellowship. So can a, a man anywhere in the world at any time, no matter what his rank, he can limit God himself. Oh, yes. So that oftentimes when we walk through this life, we want to blame the devil for hindering the things of God. But really, really what limits God is carnality, unbelief, sin in the hearts of God's people. God wants to bless us and God wants to do great things in our midst. But we are a little afraid of going where God wants us to go. You know, because we have not been this way heretofore. And God is calling us into areas that we're not normally used to going into. And I'm just going to be honest with you tonight. And I'm going to preach to you tonight. That when I went to Taiwan, there was a limitation that rose up there that wasn't just demonic. I had heard from God. I took the word of the Lord to Taiwan. And when I went there on a Sunday, uh, let's see, the first service, we had a total of uh, eight services. Uh, as soon as I got off the plane, I went, we went straight from the airport straight to church. When we got there, they had service, and I just got up and said a few words, all right? Uh, a few days went by. We made our way a couple of hundred miles or so away from uh, Taipei to a place called Sun Moon Lake. Uh, and you'll see this on the video tonight. 
And there at Sun Moon Lake at this retreat, we had three uh, services there. And then later at the end of the week, we had four more services. So in Taipei, a total of seven services, eight if you count the one at uh, the time we got there. All right. Are you with me here? Very, very busy schedule. Not only do you preach in Taiwan, but you have to translate everything. You have to sit down with the apostle in Taiwan, and you have to tell him everything you're going to preach. And he has to translate that in the Chinese language. So there's a lot of work that's involved before the word ever goes forth. Now, I went there and I sat down with Brother Edmonds, and I started sharing with him what God wanted us to do in these services. And uh, Brother Edmonds, we started working on the translation. And we got the translation down. The next morning we, we got up and uh, we preached and we taught. We laid foundation for a couple of hours. Uh, no real move of God took place that morning. And then Sunday night, it broke loose. And the Lord has spoke to me. He said that Satan had stood up to resist the apostle in Taiwan and resist the preaching that was going to go forth in these services as we preached. Are you here right now? Yes. Uh, Brother Edmonds just took the service and there was a mighty move of God that night. And the reason is because Brother Edmonds got a revelation of what was going to be preached there. Sunday morning he did not have a revelation of what in the world we were doing. And so there was great conflict. Are you here right now? Yes. And so, now, don't take this wrong, but you have to understand the intensity of the warfare. And as we were preaching and, and giving the Word of God out, and he was translating, I would go certain directions, and uh, he would get strong with me. He looked at me, and he said, Now, brother, you're fixing to mess me up. I looked back at him, and I said, You want to do it by yourself? Oh, it got quiet, didn't it? He said, no, man, don't leave me up here by myself. I said, okay. All right, watch this. You need to understand something, that when two people are in great warfare, that that warfare is so intense that they will, they will engage in warfare even against themselves. When in Joshua, Joshua saw, he saw the captain of the Lord's host. And he said, are you for us or are you against us? Which means Joshua was such a warrior that if, come on, Joshua was about ready to fight God. And Jesus said, the captain of the Lord host said, I am the captain of the Lord's host. My point is this, that Joshua was such a powerful warrior that he was about to engage and fight God. So you need to understand the intensity of warfare in the spirit. That when Satan rises up, he always rises up and he stands against the priesthood that's in that house. He's not going to stand out there in a pew to try to resist you or try to hold you back. He is going to try to stand against the ministry to resist the ministry. Why? Because he wants the ministry to limit God. And Sunday night, God anointed Brother Edmonds and Brother Edmonds got a revelation. And he came to me and he told me, Brother, he said, I am the problem. I'm the problem. I said, no, Brother Emmons, you're not the problem. He said, yes, I'm the problem. But now I've got it. Now I see it. So I got news for you. If Peter can be misled and limit God, so can an apostle in Taiwan by the name of Gary Edmonds, and so can a pastor in Bible Center Fellowship. You never forget that, my friend. It is us who limit the Holy One of Israel. The devil can't stop the church. 
The world can't stop the church. It is us that hinders the move of God. And so in the psalm, the psalmist wrote about the people of God. How God blessed them and blessed them and blessed them and blessed them with more and more and more and more. And no matter what God did for them, they kept on turning their backs on God and walking away from the Lord no matter what he did they were just hell bent on mischief and God said you have limited the Holy One of Israel through your actions and through your attitude and through your rebellion you've been blessed you've been forgiven God time and, and time again has overlooked your sin and my sin and my holding him back and limiting him because that's just how good he is he's just that kind of God he bears long with us thank God for that so I'm telling you right now there was a great struggle for me there in Taiwan and it wasn't just from the devil but we kept preaching and we kept pushing through and eventually we finished everything God told us to do there in Taiwan and there was a mighty move of God with many souls coming in to the kingdom of God but what you need to understand friend is there is a thing that will limit God in all of us you know what it is? We want to be under control. Because Israel wanted to be under control. They limited God. Anytime you take control, you are limiting God. Because it is God who is... Now I'm just going to get real with you. It got so intense there in Taiwan that the last service Sunday, I didn't even want to be there. In fact, I wanted to walk out and go straight to the to where I was staying. I did not want to be there because I felt such a limitation and a hindrance in that place. Not from the devil. You got to hear me. But I stood up and I preached. I preached and I preached. The problem is, man, you know what? We want to be under control. I want to be under control. Brother Edmonds wants to be under control. The Bible talks about in John, a certain man by the name of Diatrophes. He loved to have the preeminence over the people of God. So that he even resisted the apostle John. And he was a pastor of a church. Come on, church. We're all guilty of limiting God because we want to be in charge. We want to be in control. And you know that God has blessed us and blessed us and blessed us and moved and helped us and saved us and that right early. But yet, we continue to act foolishly at times. Experience God's power. Experience God's miracles. You have seen miracles in this house. Come on, church. And that's the way it was with Israel. And so when you go back to their early history... We look in in that psalm there, we look in their latter history and this constant limitation that they place God under. Come on. Because they wanted to be under control. They wanted to do it their way. They were just a stiff-necked, rebellious people. I am talking about the people of God. It is about time that every one of us, including the pastor behind the pulpit, gets honest with God. And stands in the house of the Lord and say, I have limited God. So at the beginning of their history, 
when Moses takes them up to Mount Sinai. The time when they become a nation, the time that they're born, from the time of their birth to the time of their adolescence, from the time of their adolescence to the time of their adulthood, that their whole history was one of being stiff-necked and God constantly blessing and forgiving them. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So that at the end of their history, God said, you limited me. Hello. And in the beginning of their history, we have it. I'm going to preach what God tells me to preach. And I came here in this morning, you know, and I know the awesome word that went forth, the awesome anointing. But I came in here and I was ripped apart, man. There was something, there was alarms going off on the inside of me. All inside of me. And I didn't understand what is going on with me. I'm supposed to come back and have a good report. Praise God. You know, and I'm glad to be home and good to see and all that. But there's something inside of me that's ripping me apart. Something is telling me everything has not been right in this place. And so God began to speak to me. And he showed me. He said, you look at Moses. He said, Moses was the leader of my people. He brought them out of Egyptian bondage. They experienced one miracle after another. Miracle. Moses led them up to Sinai. Moses leaves for a short season. He le- leaves for 40 days. That's it. That's all it took. 40 days for the pastor to be gone. 40 days he goes up in the mountain of God to get a word from God. To do the work of God. In that mountain to have an, an, a rendezvous with Jesus. And in the midst of him having a rendezvous with Jesus. And getting a revelation from God. And getting a, an anointing. A glory upon his face it only took 40 days for a people a church who saw God's miraculous power in delivering them out of Egypt only 40 days to backslide completely and what started the whole thing was because Moses was gone And it seemed to them that he was gone too long. And it seemed like he was just delaying his return. And and we don't know what Noel happened to that guy anyway. He went up in the mountain and we haven't seen him since. Uh, Who knows if he'll even come back. But he did come back. Back, Moses walked down out of that mountain, and when he walked out of that mountain, he saw the church full of sin, full of adultery. And I'm not telling you today that all of you have committed gross sin while I was gone. But there's enough here in the spirit that has to be dealt with. There were some things that went on here. And I don't know all the details, but it's not right. Some of you didn't even come to church when you should have been at church. And there's no excuse for you not to have been here. Some of you did crazy things. Did dumb things. You know you wouldn't have done if I had been here. Come on, somebody. But because I wasn't here, you could have just twisted off just like Israel did. We all do dumb things sometimes. But you know you wouldn't have done them if Moses would have been in the house. Come on, are you here right now? And I'm no Moses, but I'm just talking to you from a a place of being your pastor. And so God this morning, man, he turned me upside down, man. He turned me upside down. Why is it when a pastor leaves for a short period of time, the people go crazy? Get caught up in all kinds of crazy things. And then have the audacity to try to explain them away as just, you know, it's okay. Aaron got crazy when Moses was gone. Even the leadership got crazy. When Moses comes down, he finds an idol cow that was made by the hands of leadership in his midst, in the midst of the people. And it's so insane and it's so crazy that 
Aaron says, well, we took this gold, you know, and we just got it all together and we threw it off in the fire and the thing just jumped out. You idiot! You liar! That you lie in the presence of God to a man of God! You're an idiot! Aaron, you're a liar! You fashioned it with your own hands and called it your God! Oh, while Moses was away if you're not careful you'll fashion false gods while the man of God is away and then when he comes back and he confronts you you get all crazy I just put the gold in the fire and it jumped out stop lying stop lying and get honest with the Lord God Almighty do you understand today this very people of God who experienced the mighty hand of God bringing down them out of Egyptian bondage. They went crazy because Moses was gone. The leadership went crazy because Moses was gone. Lord Jesus. And the Bible says they made that golden calf and they begin to dance around the golden calf. Every dance that takes place in church is not God. There are some people sitting in this church tonight that still have devils that dance. And you are in great need of deliverance. But these people right here, demon powers. Moses said, you have shamed them in the presence of their enemies. I don't read about any enemies around him. I don't read about Egyptian people, armies around them at this time. Who in the world is Moses talking about? He's, oh God, he's talking about spirits. <laughs> Moses said to Aaron, you have caused this people to be ashamed in the presence of the enemies of God. Who are they? Demon powers. And as these people are dancing, frolicking around, the Bible said they started peeling off their clothes, casting their clothes aside, getting into a, a, a naked orgy. I'm talking about the people of God. In only 40, less than 40 days time, that's where they went. And as they begin to dance and begin to worship the false god, the cow, in the name of the Lord, by the way, they started offering offerings to it in the name of the Lord, by the way. Acting like it, they're still okay with God. Acting like they're still religious. Acting like everything's all right with the Lord and what they're doing. And so they go. And they get involved in all kinds of immorality. Right there at the foot of the mountain of God. And as soon as they do... Demons started dancing with them. I'm ta listen to me. I'm talking about people who have the blood applied Amen. to their life. Israel had the blood applied to their life. Acting foolishly there in the at the foot of the mountain. Moses and Joshua come down out of the mountain of God. Joshua had gone up just a little ways up in the mountain. Moses went further. There are certain places that Joshua can't go that only Moses can go. Amen. Give God praise. Give God praise. Moses comes down. He's glowing, man. He's got the glory of God on his face. Tables of stone written with the hand of God himself. Written by God himself. Comes down out of the mountain of God. And Joshua meets him there. Somewhere in the mountain there. 
Joshua says, sounds like warfare going on down there. Moses, sounds like warfare. No, no, take that back. That's not warfare. They're not fighting anything. They're not fighting enemies. Sounds to me like they're singing. Sounds to me like they're partying. Moses comes down he sees what's going on he takes those tables of stone and he overreacts he should not have overreacted he should not have busted the tables of stone but what you need to understand is the people of God had broken the covenant. And so when he slams the law down, all he's doing is showing you what they've already done in the spirit. Amen. So in a sense, he overreacts to what he sees. He's overwhelmed by it. That this people would do what they're doing, dancing naked here, worshiping a golden calf. And Aaron as a leader giving consent to the whole matter Moses is extremely angry I'm talking about the meekest man in all the earth come on the meekest man in all the earth is full of anger when he sees these people playing the harlot God is angry with them because of what they're doing. They're in sin. And God is about ready to wipe them out and destroy them. And Moses intercedes. He stands in the gap for this people. He asks God to forgive them. And he says, if not brought my name out of your book. You talk about a cutting edge preacher. You're talking about somebody that's real. You cut Talamosa. He understood the seriousness of it. If God doesn't forgive them, then all of them are going to go to hell. And so he makes a cutting edge statement. If you don't forgive them, God, then send me to hell. The Bible says that the Lord forgave the people. And he says, Moses, take them further. Take them to the place that I showed you. Take them to the place that I appear to you at. When I appear to you in the burning bush, I want you to take them to the exact same place where a bush burned with fire and was not consumed. I want you to take them to that place. Yes, give God praise. I want you to take them to that place in the spirit. They're in the area that it happened. It's where you saw me burn. It's where you saw me a fire. But I did not concern. He said, I want you to take them in the spirit to this place. I'll forgive them. Thank God for it. So I'm telling you tonight that God is calling us to repentance. Because we have limited God. And some of us, I said some of us, not all of us. Some of us have acted crazy while the pastor has been gone. What in the world are you thinking? Get your head on straight. God wants to bless your life. But if you keep acting crazy, you limit God from doing what He wants to do in it through you. Amen. Father God, tonight. I thank you for the word that was preached while we're gone.
Before I ever got in the pulpit this morning, I was already in warfare. One of the brothers, one of the preachers, local preacher here in this house came to me. He said, Pastor, he said, if I had known, I would have done something. I said, Brother, there's some things you can't do. God is in this place right now. Will you get honest with God? All through their history, they set a pattern. We all set patterns in our life. You can look at their whole history. Look at Ezekiel chapter 16. I read you this psalm here, 78. I believe it was. And this was a pattern in their life. A constant rebellion. A constant mischief. A constant being stiff-necked. A constant doing that which was wrong. In the presence of the miraculous. The decisions you make now at the beginning of your walk with God. Will affect your future affect the time of your maturation in God I thank you oh God that you are a consuming fire I thank you tonight Lord that you're able to consume us with your fire as a burning bush was consumed with fire but yet not burn in the name of Jesus would you just Take a knee, bow before the Lord right there where you are. You don't have to come to the front of this church. Right where you are, you can take a knee. <laughs> Lord God, tonight I repent myself from limiting you. You're so good. Mir miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Forgive us when we play the whore. Forgive us when we play harlotry. Forgive us when we play with God. Forgive us when we play for, with the things of God. Forgive me, oh God, for being lukewarm, carnal. I bless you, my Jesus. I bless you, my Jesus. I worship you, God, tonight. I'm nothing. I am nothing, God. I am nothing. But I pray for this people tonight. God, that you would forgive us. Have mercy upon us, God. <laughs>